Hey, we're looking good on 1011 Strong with Ken Howard. The White Shadow is with us today. Whose program has been bounced around like a basketball? You started right. out, what, on a Saturday night? No, you know, started on Saturday. a Monday, then went to Saturday. Oh, then went to Saturday. Then the network did a strange thing. They actually let us go back to Monday, a night we've been on before which limits our chance to be on every night of the week, because now we're doing Tuesday. So what we have left is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and maybe Sunday in the morning. I think they're gonna try to have us be on every night so that everybody who has one free night can see us. <laughs> Why Tuesday night? What, what are they trying to do? Do you have any idea? Not me, although the ratings are supposedly pretty good on Tuesday. So any slot they can find for us is fine with me, as long as they'll keep us. Do you know, the program you did, which I felt had a touch of genius, it really smacked of something very well, cleverly thought out, was when the, um, the Harlem Globetrotters were on your show. Yes, that's thanks to our producer, Bruce Paltrow. That was his idea, and it worked well, and it helped us in the ratings, because we made the top ten that uh, week, which is a good example uh, of the fact that the Globetrotters really still... You know, the amazing mm -hmm. thing about the Globetrotters is they always fill the house in Lincoln, Nebraska, when mm -hmm. they come through once a year, and they can always bring in... Even though they do the same show, mm -hmm. you see the same old jokes, and you know some of the stars are missing now, mm -hmm. but the, they can always bring them out. They really are what, what people say they are too. They're real ambassadors. I mean, they're really professional mm -hmm. gentlemen. In fact, all the guys on the team who play members of the team were very impressed. Those guys just stood there waiting, you know, to shoot the next scene. They were never harmed. They were well, was Nate Branch on there? Oh, yeah, call? sure, yeah. Because he used to be the captain of the, of the basketball team in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, oh, yeah? in Nebraska. Oh, yeah. And he plays music. He's really quite a good musician. You know, we were at the Cotton Bowl, Margo and I. You did it. You, you did the, the, the parade. You did the parade. And I, that. honest, just rooting for Nebraska like crazy. Nothing oh. against Houston, but I mean, I just love that football team and imaginative and terrific. Broke her hearts. Oh, you know who his wife is, of course. That's Ann Lander's daughter, and that's Margot, and the Broad Key Boys who've that's opened up right. a new jewelry store right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, his mother-in-law gives him all sorts of wonderful advice, like marry my daughter and take good care of her. <laughs> right? <laughs> How are the children? They're great. They're in great shape, actually. They're three. They're, they're three, aren't they? Yeah, and over Christmas vacation, of course, they're on the they're on the set a lot. I realized more and more I couldn't keep them away, and other kids too. A lot of people in the that are working in the show over the time, the part of Christmas we were working. They had their kids there. It's a great, it's like a little make-believe school. You don't have to go to class. You just go to the gym and play ball. You were, you're six foot six and a half now. Well, I think I may have shrunk. But I, mean, <laughs> I was when the last measure. Were you a really big baby? Were you, were you tall? I was born in El Centro, California, and I weighed nine pounds and 11 ounces. And I was born about 11.30 at night, March 28, 1944. But uh, in terms of like you were in sixth grade, were you really big then? Did they I, I know that you were going to be that big? I was always uh, tall. I, I don't think I had any big sprouting thing. I think I was always one of the tallest kids in my class, always. And then uh, with the exception of a, of a couple of black guys uh, when I was in school later, I was always the biggest. Uh, and there was a couple of guys that came through, one who transferred, one who was always a year ahead of me, who was just a little bit bigger. You know, even though I watch you The White Shadow all the time, you know what I remember you most for is your first movie, Tell Me That You Love Me, Juni Moon. Mm -hmm. There was something so pathetic about you, and you, you to me, looked so awkward and mm -hmm. unathletic. And I thought, is that acting, or is Ken Howard not really an athlete? That this is all make-believe. Otto Preminger had a great way to start me off in my film career. The first role I played on film, thanks to Otto, was a, of a dim-witted spastic <laughs> who dies at the end, tragically. <laughs> I mean, it's true. And I loved doing it. It was such a challenge to do all that, and, uh, and it ended my film career, actually, <laughs> right out of the gate. No, but I mean, a little bit. You know, it was a yeah. strange role. People would say, you know, mm -hmm. you okay? You know, I said, yeah. You've been accused of relentless honesty, and they say that, that's what gives the snap of truth to the white shadow. Mm. Yeah, probably. I think it's also Bruce Paltrow, the executive producer, has a real good sense of uh, cinema verite and that little, that little turn of events that's not quite so predictable but really does happen yeah. in life. You know. is, is your high school uh, coach still alive? He is. His name's Fritz Mueller. He's a great coach and quite known to a lot of people. Even a lot of college coaches know him and respect him because well, he's... I understand that you pattern some of the clothes that you wear after him. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the coaching clothes, really, are a lot like uh, Fred's wore. I don't know whether he dresses that way now. But Do you ever go back and see him? What, what does he think? What does he yeah. think of you now? Is his boy doing so well? Uh, he's great, Fritz. He still has. I went back last year to watch uh, Manhasset. That's the high school I went to play in the uh, 
finals of uh, the county championship in this big coliseum. And he had a fellow, a kid playing for him named Tommy Emma, who's uh, now on his way to becoming a star at Duke. And then I went back again. Uh, I was given an award by St. John's University, and they had Fritz there too. It was called a Coach mm -hmm. for All Seasons Award or something. And I talk with him about a lot of stuff. He's really quite a a fine man. I think he's actually turned down a lot of kind of college uh, nibbles because I think he likes that high school setting, you know, for dealing with kids of that age. And, mm -hmm. you, know. you know, Ken, you look so clean cut. Mm -hmm. Could you ever play a villain? I mean, a real evil, menacing villain. I played one uh, on the uh, something called The Real American Hero for CBS. I don't know how good I was at it, but I played a guy named Danny Boy Mitchell. Oh, I'm a bad guy, real bad. You're a bad Redneck guy. killer, mean to women, and uh, just an awful person. So you had to really act. I played right from my real true self. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how about gut reaction, because there was a comment. You were quoted in uh, Seventeen magazine, that was my source, and you said, actors who think too much get themselves into a great deal of trouble. I think that's true, actually. I think anybody who does, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a time when you can... Uh, I don't know why I said that. It sounds like I said it a long time ago, but I probably meant that uh, you can kind of complicate the fact of acting so much that it's quite apparent that you're acting. You know, you're not just letting things happen to you and responding. But it should be like, I love to do some of the scenes uh, uh, damn near without rehearsing. I watch how it works. Take just it say, first roll take. It. Go. Yeah. See what happens. Well, if it doesn't work, you can always do it again. But sometimes what happens is just that sort of yeah. unpredictable thing that happens in life. You can't do that on the stage as I know, much. I was just going to say that. You know, and so you won a Tony Award. Yeah. Child's play. Mm -hmm. You've been around, kid, and now you've got a, a winner. You know that. It's already established, of course. Are we going to go another year? Yeah, you're going to go about 15 years. Oh, I want to see you with gray hair going out there, taking it on the first take, and still getting the baskets. Wouldn't that be Will you do oh, that? No, no, I only coach now. I don't play anymore. I've the legs are going, you. and the heart's weak. You know, I can't. I've seen you throw a couple, though, and you usually get it Games? in. Games? I've never thrown a game. Oh, you mean <laughs> You know, the, the CBS the big wigs, the kind of the main poncho guys in charge of the network, they all came to the set one day, and one fellow th threw a ball to me and said, well, you're the white shadow, do something. And just laughing, I lofted up about a 25-footer and bottomed it right through, and they all cheered, and then they said, you want to do another one? I said, you got to be <laughs> kidding. I can't match that and walked up. It's true. Oh, I hope they got that on film. Uh, so they no, no, but they have it that. in their minds. I'm oh, hoping yes. maybe some of the men that make Perfect. the decision say, well, he did hit that shot, you know. Must be real. Another successful year. So. You're a good guy and you're a good actor and we love you. Thank you, Donna. It's The White Shadow. Ken Howard. Watch it here on 1011 Strong.